Environmental Injuries Outline Frostbite Pathophysiology Clinical Degree of Injury Lab Studies Imaging Studies Treatment Emergency Department Care Consultations NSAIDs Antibiotics Topical Agents Tetanus Toxoid DPT Follow-up Further Outpatient Care Complications Patient Education Frostbite Frostbite is a cold-related injury characterized by freezing of tissue. It combines tissue freezing with hypoxia and general body dehydration. Pathophysiology Cold exposure leads to ice crystal formation, cellular dehydration, protein denaturation, inhibition of DNA synthesis, abnormal cell wall permeability, damage to capillaries and pH changes. Rewarming causes cell swelling, erythrocyte and platelet aggregation, endothelial cell damage, thrombosis, tissue edema, increased compartment space pressure, bleb formation, localized ischemia, and tissue death. Underlying responses to these injuries include generation of oxygen-free radicals, production of prostaglandins and thrombexane A2, release of proteolytic enzymes, and generalized inflammation. Clinical History Symptoms affecting frostbitten body parts include the following. Coldness and firmness Stinging Burning, numbness, clumsiness, pain, throbbing, burning, or electric current like sensations on rewarming. Degree of injury First degree injury erythema, edema, waxy appearance, hard white plaques, and Sensory deficit. Second degree injury. Erythema. Edema. And formation of clear blisters high in thromboxane. Third degree injury. Presence of blood filled blisters. Fourth degree injury. Full thickness damage affecting muscles, tendons, and bone. Lab studies, imaging studies, lab studies. Commonly encountered findings include evidence of hemoconcentration and depressed liver function. Imaging studies, TC-99M, technetium-99. But technetate scintigraphy is sensitive and specific for tissue injury. Radiographs identify clinically suspected fractures or dislocations. Arteriography is of limited value because it only images large vessels, not microvasculature. Treatment Pre-hospital care Address life-threatening conditions first. Replace wet clothing with dry, soft clothing to minimize further heat loss. Initiate rewarming of affected area as soon as possible. Avoid rubbing affected area with warm hands or snow, as this can cause further injury. Emergency Department Care Address life-threatening conditions first. Fluid resuscitation, especially in persons with mountain frostbite, enhances blood flow and tissue perfusion. Rapidly rewarm affected body part, avoiding further trauma. 
An appropriate warming technique is the use of a whirlpool bath or tub of water at 40 to 42 degrees centigrade. Mild antibacterial soap may be added. Administer analgesics such as morphine sulfate as needed for pain. Consultations. It often takes six to eight weeks for frostbitten tissue to be declared viable. Affected area generally heals or mummifies without surgery. Therefore, unless guided by scintigraphy, delay amputation as long as possible. Surgical consultation is appropriate for guiding long-term management, including debridement for infections not responding to conservative management or for skin grafting. NSAIDs Antibiotics NSAIDs These drugs have analgesic and antipyretic activities. Their mechanism of action is not known, but may inhibit cyclooxygenase activity and prostaglandin synthesis. Antibiotics Used for wound infection prophylaxis. Their use is controversial and not recommended by some experts unless signs of infection develop. Topical agents applied to debrided, clear blisters and intact hemorrhagic blisters. They minimize further thrombic sane synthesis. Aloe vera cream used to debride blisters and prevent further trauma. Adult dose apply to affected area 6 hourly. Pediatric dose apply to affected area 6 hourly. Tetanus toxoid DPT Tetanus toxoid used for tetanus immunization in patients at risk of frostbite associated tetanus. DPT Diphtheria tetanus toxoid used to induce active immunity against tetanus in selected patients. Tetanus and diphtheria toxoids are the immunizing agents of choice for most adults and children older than 7 years. Pregnant patients should receive only tetanus toxoid, not a diphtheria antigen containing product. Follow up Further inpatient care. Place the patient on high protein and high calorie diet to promote healing. Place cotton pledgets between frostbitten digits to decrease tissue maceration. Encourage active motion of affected part as soon as possible. Continue whirlpool baths twice a day, adding surgical soap to the water. Discourage patients from smoking. Further outpatient care. Strongly counsel patients with frostbite on the increased susceptibility to frostbite injury and appropriate techniques to avoid cold. In or outpatient medications. Patients' hospital course dictates choice of outpatient medications and may include antibiotics, analgesics, and ibuprofen. Complications Wound infection Tetanus Frostbite is considered a high-risk wound Hyperglycemia Acidosis Refractory dysrhythmias Tissue loss Gangrene Death Patient education Primary defense against frostbite is to get out of the cold. If this is not possible, pre-planning and use of appropriate clothing are mandatory. Follow weather forecasts. Increase fluid and caloric intake in cold weather. Patient education. Do not wash hands, face or feet frequently under extreme cold conditions, as weather-beaten skin is more resistant to frostbite. Avoid alcohol and tobacco. Keep toenails and fingernails trimmed. Keep tetanus immunization status current.